Hello, huge movie fanatic Nate coming at you for another slam bang review to another slam bang movie. This time I'm coming at you with a review for the film, the 20th Century Fox slash Marvel Entertainment film, Deadpool. Now I've mentioned, you know, probably every time or most of the times I do one of these like comic book movies, comic book superhero movies that I'm not a comic book fan, but you know, I'm a you know, having grown up in 1989 with the you know, release of Batman and then Dick Tracy a year later and then a year later Rocketeer and the Flash TV series and all this stuff. I mean, I've always kind of, not always, but I've always been, well, not always, but I've, you know, every now and then I've, after one point or another, I've been, I've been known to, you know, Swamp Thing, you know, TV series and movies and stuff. I've been known to be a fan of certain comic book you know, movies slash TV shows and all this and that, but I'm not really, I'm not really a reader, so I'm not really a comic book fan, but I'm a, a fan of, or have been, and I am a fan of certain, like, comic book movies. So, you know, basically, not being a comic book fan, I had no idea about this character. I had never heard of this character before. Um, back when this movie was coming out, I had a viewer, you know, do a, send me a, do a comment or something like that and ask me if I was going to see this and I had no idea. I think my response was like, I don't even know what that is, you know, I had no idea what this is or was and so cut to several months later and I actually found it or it actually came around my area in a freaking second run theater for a dollar so I'm like, I'll see this for a dollar. So I saw it for a dollar and uh, here I am to review this movie, Deadpool. So. Um, you know, this is, I, I'd known a little bit about this, that this was like an R-rated superhero movie, and uh, I guess it, you know, was like a comedy, and, you know, the the opening credits were was kind of like, you know, that, that freeze frame of something. The one thing I didn't really like is just like the opening credits in the sense of the, the credits, like, you know, whatever they said. They, they didn't, it wasn't normal, they changed it up and be a cutesy face. I should say before I forget, not that I could, is that... I, I found this movie, while I did, you know, like the sense of humor overall and stuff, I found it almost like sense of humor, you know, like funny overload. I felt like it was just like, for me, it was almost like too much funny and like sometimes like the, you know, the opening credits for, or a prime example of the humor being kind of like, hi, oh, yeah, well, you know, it's just like whatever, you know. So the opening credits were a perfect example of the humor, you know, kind of, in my opinion, just being a little like over the... I don't know, just like whatever. Yeah, you're funny, kind of funny. You're, you're, yeah, you're funny, but not really funny, kind of funny, and whatever. So, but I did what the thing that I did like. What I was, what I started to say before I got all bitchy, is what I did like about the opening credits was that you know freeze frame and traveling around that freeze frame of the you know that action scene that takes place a few moments later in the whatever SUV or whatever, and that was that was cool. And there was probably some song playing. I can't remember. Um, so the actual, you know, camera tracking, you know, trucking, traveling all around this freeze frame of this, you know, mid-air, whatever action scene, you know, basically photo, uh, was was relatively funny and or really cool and kind of funny when you saw he was grabbing his underwear or whatever and he's getting a wedgie or whatever. You know, I've only seen, seen this movie once, it was like a week ago, and you know, it's I, I've said before that I can't exactly retain every single aspect of a movie, I, you know if I've just seen it once. But long story short, I did, you know, with the exception of the trying to be all cutesy face, you know, like credits, I did like the actual non-credit part of the opening credits with that one long shot. I was, I was, you know, I was pretty much flabbergasted when the movie started. It was just like started with the slam bang, what I would regard as really, really pretty awesome, radical, gnarly, you know, action scene and what I would probably regard as one of the best, probably the, you know, I don't know, I can't, can't remember everything, but I think, you know, from what I remember, I mean, the, the first scene, like the first action scene on the, whatever it is, freeway bridge or whatever, is really probably the, my favorite action scene, you know, and of course we, unfortunately, because of the way the movie is, you know, cut up into pieces and flashbacks and shit, we, we come back to that same action sequence, I think, two or maybe three times, so it's, it's not complete in one 
sitting. It's like starts it and then we come back to it and I think finish it on a third time or something like that. But uh, I, I did, I was like, you know, wow, that's pretty. And seeing it with a little bit of an audience was cool because, you know, they laughed at it and stuff. And I like seeing, you know, funny movies with a, an audience because I like the, although I'm not necessarily a laugh out louder person myself unless it's really amazingly funny, I like to hear other people laugh. You know, it's kind of a compliment you know, goes with the comedy well. And I was impressed overall with the, you know, the humor. I thought that the humor was humorous because as you've, as you may or may not know, there's all kinds of different versions of humor and this and that. Um, I did, on the whole, find the, the humor in the movie humorous. My only complaint with the humor is I do almost, you know, I do feel like, in my opinion, that it's almost humor overload, just kind of like, almost maybe a little too much humor or whatever, but that's just, you know, what my takeaway after having seen it once, you know, I was very impressed by the, not only the action of the opening scene, but the humor that went with the action it was just like in 12 Bullets, I remember 12 Bullets, and holy cow, I was like, wow, I can see why this movie did so well, because it did pretty well, you know, financially, it was, you know, rather popular as far as I remember. So long story short, I mean, you know, the movie's about this guy, and we see through flashbacks and this and that, that this guy met this girl, basically a love story slash comedy slash slam bang action movie, superhero movie, um, meets this girl and whatever, and then he, you know, obviously having experience, uh, you know, with a family member, and the big C, I'm not even going to say the fucking you know, say the fucking disease or whatever, that movie, or that, that detail about the character, you know, the big C and all this and shit and that, you know, brought, you know, brought me down more than it would, who hadn't been touched, who'd, who'd forged, you know, who fortunately hadn't been touched by the big goddamn C in their life or family's life or whatever, so that aspect actually, you know, ruins the movie considerably for me and probably drops maybe a half or quarter star dropping because of that. And it's just, you know, a dropping. I just said dropping. But, um, but that, you know, that, that element was, you know, not enjoyable just because of what I, you know, <clears throat> have experienced with a family member in the big, the big C. So that was a bummer. Overall, I, uh, I'm not a big fan of like non-linear storytelling, but you know, while I was watching it and after the fact, I realized, well, that's really the only way they could do this particular story unless you wanted to wait until like an hour and a half, or I don't know how long the movie is, but maybe an hour into the movie before he even gets on the suit. So, you know, I guess, you know, long in retrospect, they did the right choice by doing like non-linear and starting with this, basically the movie starts in the middle, you know, with that action scene or whatever, but like I say, I, you know, because of my personality or whatever on a first time viewing, like very much with social network, sometimes that non-linear uh, storytelling kind of just throws me, I, throws me for a loop. I prefer just linear, you know, storytelling, or if you're going to change around the shit, like do, you know, Hateful Eight, where it's kind of just, well, I complained about that too, but I prefer linear storytelling, but like I said, I mean, I understand why they went the route they did, because they wouldn't have any action scene until an hour or more into the movie, so, so, you know, whoop de doo um, this movie's probably going to start a trend of all this kind of, I don't know, it's, there's going to be a lot of copycat shit because of this, you know, more R-rated. I mean, R-rated movies are good because I kind of got sick of this, you know, PG-13 nonsense, but... <clears throat> so maybe that, you know, maybe the fact that there'll be more R-rated action and more R-rated superheroes will be a good thing, not that, I guess, a gratuitous violence is really something that I crave at this point in my life, so whatever, but I do feel like, I don't know, maybe there'll be all kinds of copycats trying to do the humor aspect too, I don't know, whatever. But long story short, it was enjoyable. I'm glad I saw it for a dollar. Um, while I was sitting there watching it, I mean, I definitely want to own it, but I don't want to pay 20 bucks for it. I'll, I'd wait until maybe 15 or, you know, I'll buy the Blu-ray for maybe 15 or less or something like that. But I'm not going to rush out and buy it. It's something that I'm going to want to own at some point, but uh, definitely glad I saw it. I mean, and uh, I'm struggling with stars because there's all kinds of elements about it. Like the humor is funny, but yet I feel like there's too much of it. And like the the big C, uh, you know, element to the movie is a bummer. And the nonlinearness. I think at the end of the day, it, it does deserve. Oh, one thing I want to say before I close is I'm not too keen on like the 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 bad guy, like the baddie in this movie, and also. Because the opening action sequence, which I believe was cut into two or three different parts, 
was so amazing to me. Like the unfortunately, like I can't remember really thinking too much of any of the action that took place for the rest of the movie. Like you know, in in a different location. Like I say, all that you know, bridge stuff on the highway action scene was great. But I what I'm getting at is I really really wasn't too keen on like the the action scene at the end of the movie and and stuff like that. You know, at that big, you know, the meeting of the whatever and, and the kind of uh, recruiting of the two, you know, X-Men was kind of funny and dumb at the same time. Like, you know, the whole joke about, obviously Fox owns, you know, the X-Men rights and stuff. So obviously the whole joke about there's only these two, you know, insignificant characters in this huge mansion, you know, Xavier home or whatever like that. And they actually referenced, like, the two guys who played Professor X, which was funny. I mean, there's a lot of funny inside kind of joke stuff. A lot of, a lot of it undoubtedly went over my head because I'm not a huge, you know, media viewer and I'm not a comic book fan and I don't watch all kinds of, you know, I'm sure I don't know. I probably only knew half or less of the inside joke shit, but I'd take uh, that as a compliment, like me not knowing not being so immersed in 21st century or 20th century, late 20th century media, so that's actually a good thing. But uh, I've struggled with the stars. I think at the end of the day, it, it, is, it is enjoyable enough where I can give it two and three quarter stars out of four stars, because it, it definitely, one thing I liked about the humor aspect, although I do feel like it was, in my opinion, maybe a little too, you know, humor overload, one thing I do like about that aspect is I, I do like humor. And one thing that I think particularly with, you know, Zack Snyder's Man of Steel, and I haven't seen Batman vs. Superman yet, but a lot of these superhero movies just go so, like, serious and, like, oh, we're so dark and we're so serious and whatever that other movie was, you know, like the Batman, you know, like the Christopher Nolan Batman trilogy and stuff like that. I do feel like, you know, um, so many of these superhero movies as of late have gone so dark and just so serious and all this shit that it's kind of like, I mean, definitely... For me, it definitely passed the point of like rolling your eyes, just like yeah, yeah, you're dark and serious, whatever. It was it was a breath of fresh air to see this, you know, this basically the superhero character who just you know because of his predicament, or I don't know, well he was goofy, funny before that, but I like to think because of his predicament of near death or potential near death and be, being you know be having since become rather invincible, he's just kind of like doesn't really have too much of a care in the world, and he's just kind of like really doesn't take things much too serious and I kind of identify with that I'm just at this point and even before this point points before now you know I'm, I'm in the same attitude where I've really never taken things too much for serious very serious because at the end of the day nothing freaking really matters anyway so I do you know I do identify with the, like the main character superhero as far as that goes so like I say two and three quarter stars out of four Definitely glad I saw it for a dollar. Um, glad I didn't buy blind buy it because I don't want to pay twenty dollars uh, for it. Like I said, but I'll definitely add it to the collection somewhere down the line when I can get it for fifteen or preferably less than that on Blu-ray, which you know I can't imagine would be very difficult. So thank you very much for watching this review of Deadpool, which um, like I said, I just the the, be the beginning action scene, you know, and the twelve bullet thing was just so you know, creative, clever. It's nice to see a movie, this reminded me about, reminded me of seeing movies when I was a teenager, when a movie was actually creative and actually made you go, wow, that's cool. Um, so many superhero movies now, and movies in general, are just like you roll your eyes at, and like, just so many details about this movie that obviously I can't remember, having only seen it once, like the 12 bullets and stuff like that, and all the cute little you know, things like getting all the guns and filling up the bag only to forget the, you know, the duffel bag full of guns at the end of the movie was just things like that just make you smile and just make you make you enjoy and like the movie all the more. So I definitely recommend it. Um, it. You know, a lot of people like it and for this, in this case, I can understand why. So more or less for, you know, recommended movie. So thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you next time.